Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has revealed and made known to us through His Spirit, which is also called the Comfort and the Holy Ghost. So, peace to everybody, and I gotta say, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Jesus' name. Because truly, without Him, this program does not exist. I don't have no wisdom. You don't know what you know. None of us exist without Him. So, we gotta give praise to our Creator. All right. So, with that being said, what we're gonna take a look at today is how we need to fight against Satan's temptation and resist his clever schemes and tactics that he's coming up with. All right, so let's have a look at this. Let's take a look at uh, Matthew 16, and let's start at verse 21. And we're going to have a look at how Satan was trying to, you know, he was actually working through Peter uh, when he made this statement because Jesus was saying that uh, he had to uh, be, be betrayed by the scribes and Pharisees and uh, be killed and rise again on the third day. And then Peter said, no, don't do, don't say that, Lord. But really, Peter, he was operating in another spirit because that had to happen. So this is where we're going to pick it up from. Let's look at uh, Matthew 16. Let's take a look at verse 21. So we need to be aware, always be aware of when Satan is trying to attack you, because sometimes we can we can be used by Satan. So we, we don't want this to happen. But let's take a look at what happened here. Matthew 16, I started verse 21. It said, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. So let's see what happened. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Man, no, you can't say that, Peter. Jesus had to go through that. So watch this. It said, this is what Jesus told Peter. And this was right after Jesus got done telling uh, uh, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And he was talking about himself. Jesus was talking about himself, not Peter. But he gave Peter the, uh, the, the keys to the kingdom. Meaning that he had access. He had the authority to get into the kingdom. But anyway, let's take a look. It said, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. He said man, he, he was rebuking Peter because he was operating in the spirit of Satan. He said, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Satan don't care about thing, godly things. He care about what men think. That's what he savors. It said, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So being a disciple of Jesus Christ, we got to be able to deny ourselves. We can't give in to temptation. That's why we was just reading this. Let's go over here to James. Let's take a look at James 1. And let's have a look at verse 12. James 1 and verse 12, because Satan, the way he gets to us, he don't have no access to you. Unless you give it to him, you got to give him the permission. How you think he took over the world through Adam and Eve? He, Adam gave him the permission. Remember, to whose servants you are, to who you obey, that's whose servants you are, to whom you obey. Remember that. If God is your master, serve him. If Satan is your master, you need to repent and come away from him. I'm not going to ever tell you to serve him. Don't do that. That dude don't got nothing good for you. Nothing good for none of us. Let's take a look. James 1. Let's take a look at verse 12. This is why we need to be strong. Endure the trials and tribulations that we, uh, that we are faced with. When, when, when Satan is tempting us with something that we know we shouldn't be doing, don't do it. Kill the thought. That's how you start fighting this dude. Man, with the word, fight this dude with that word. So watch this. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. God is not a man that he should lie. He has promised those that love him a crown of life. He said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, because God ain't going to tempt you with no evil. Now, God will try you, 
but he's not going to tempt you with evil because if you wind up doing that thing, you you God has made you sin. So look, we're going to see how we tempted though. It said, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But this is how temptation comes. So we don't have nobody to blame but ourselves. This is why we need to take self-accountability. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's how you get tempted. Satan tempts you with things that he think you might want because he studies all of us. He's been watching us. So he know what we like. And so now what he's going to do is bring something or present something to you in a way where it'd be like, man, it's like an offer you can't refuse, but you better refuse it because this guy ain't got nothing good to give you. Nothing. It said, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So lust gives birth, birth to sin. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. So when, 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 when the final result or what sin brings forth or what it produces is death. We don't want to die, people. It said, do not err, my beloved brethren. Because the way we fight Satan off is through the word. We've seen examples of that when the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, in the wilderness. And Satan came tempting him. He was quoting scripture back to Satan. But anyway, let me just show you this. This is how you, you know, you fight Satan. This is uh, uh, Ephesians 5, and you can go and read it on your own. But this is what you need to do. Go and study this on your own. Take a look at this Ephesians 5. I mean, it's Ephesians 6. I'm sorry. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, and look at this uh, 10 through 18. Take a look at that. But I love this right here. It says, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you got to have faith. When you being tempted by something, something that you like, you got to deny yourself. And always remember that J Jesus Christ said, if you don't deny yourself, you're not worthy of him. So now let's go and take a look back because back in the beginning, we're going to see how this temptation came about. When Satan tempted Eve, let's take a look at this. Let's see what happened. Let's take a look at uh, Genesis 3. Let's take a look. Let's read 1 through 6. This is when uh, sin ultimately had rulership in the earth because adam disobeyed god watch this it said now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman yeah have god said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden so now you know he's questioning what she knows already and a lot of times when people get questioned they start thinking twice about it. So this guy is very, very subtle and crafty. When somebody make you question, you be like, wait a minute, is that it? Is, do I have to do? Now, now that you confuse, he can he can lead you and guide you now. Watch this. She should have just stood on the truth. And see, that's what the truth do. The truth keep you from being lied to. It keep you from all the deception that Satan is putting out. It said, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. The tree that's in the midst of the garden is Satan. He said the tree that's in the midst of the garden. God have said, "Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. So you wasn't spoke. God commanded. He gave a specific set of instructions not to have any dealings with Satan which is represented by this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Watch this. It said, and the serpent said unto the woman, he shall not surely die. He was a liar. He got, a, he got the creation killed. He got the creation killed through this lie. Now watch this. It said, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's what happened. We got more knowledge now. We got knowledge of some things that we shouldn't have had at that time. We should have just obeyed God. But watch this. Satan always tempts you with something that you he, he, he tried to make it seem like you missing something. So watch this. She was tempted by this. So what happened? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So she was the knowledge that he was offering was appealing to her. This is why you get some people that uh, uh, venture off into occult practices, the unknown or secret things, 
because they like secret knowledge. But a lot of that stuff is foolishness, man. We got the knowledge that we need, the word of God. We got to deny ourselves, people. Don't let Satan take us off of what we're supposed to be doing. He said, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And what they ate was some lies. I think it's over in, uh, let me see, is it Hosea? Hosea 10 and 13 or 13 and 10? Let me see. It might be 10 and 13. Hosea 10 and 13. Let me just see something real quick. Yeah, look at this. 10 and 13. It said, ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. So that fruit that they ate was the fruit of lies. Satan is the father of all lies. And let's see what else he does. Because he can make things look real good. Watch this. Let's go over here to Job 41. Gotta be careful with this guy. You know, so if you're a person that uh, struggle with drug addiction, drug abuse. That's how Satan going to come to you. He going to make you feel like you got to get that hit for that sensation. If you're a person that struggle with uh, uh, being addicted to sex and stuff like this, he's going to bring that man or that woman to you and you're going to be tempted by that. And possibly, you know, if you're not strong enough, you can fall. That's why you got to stay girded. Keep this word on your mind. So look at this. Job 41. Let's see what he do. This is what Satan does. He make it the pot, a, a path to shine after him so he can make things. He can make things look real good. It said one would think that the deep to be hoary. You know what the deep it, the deep ocean It's dark down there, but he can present it in a way to where it's, it's bright. So you got to watch this guy. He's very subtle and crafty. He's a liar. And first thing he do, as soon as you messed up and you sin, he going and telling God, look, look at what he did. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. It said, upon earth there is not his light, who is made without fear. He ain't afraid of nothing. But God, he said, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Well, who is the king of all the children of pride? Satan. He the father of all the proud and the lies. All right, let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here to uh, Matthew. Matthew 4. Let's look at this temptation that he put our master through. Jesus Christ. Let's go and take a look at this. Uh, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 4. Let's go and read this. Matthew 4. Let's take a look at how this guy operates. So we need to be careful about this. You know, he always going to present something to you. Oh, man, yeah, you can do that, man. You, yeah, you you good. Go ahead. Don't believe him. Matthew 4. Let's take a look at verses 1 through 3. So it said, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. So here comes Satan tempting Jesus now. Let's see what he did. And when the tempter... See, Satan is called the tempter. Where's my pen? Let me let me point this out. And when the tempter came to him, so he's going to tempt you with things. So if he was tempting Jesus, you know, he's going to try to tempt us. We belong to Jesus. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So he was trying to tempt Jesus like he he already knew that Jesus was the son of God. And guess what? I love how Jesus be operating because he didn't have to prove nothing to him. He already knew who he was. Only thing Jesus did was quote scriptures back to him. And Satan only went so far and then he left. He left because this is how he do. After you resist him for a while, then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That's how the Lord worked. After you get done getting tried, you're going through your tribulation. When it's all said and done, the Lord sent some angels to comfort you. He command them through his word. Here, go make this happen for my servant. Go and lift them up. Go and lift her up. I love how the Lord be doing stuff. Let's go and take a look. Let's go and see somebody who who fell for this temptation. See, this, see this is the thing. You Your desires has to be lined up with what thus said the lord you have to be obedient to him because if you're not obedient to him you'll wind up falling off of what you're supposed to be doing 
you'll start leaving the path. So let's take a look at this. So what we're going to have a look at over here, let's look at this uh, Joshua 6. And uh, we're just going to read into it because what we're taking a look at is when the Lord was getting ready to destroy Jericho. And what he told Joshua and the rest of the children of Israel was don't take nothing from out of Jericho except for certain things, the treasuries uh, that they had in there, uh, because th this land was cursed. So let's take a look. We're going to read into this because you had one brother, Achan. He started coveting and he was tempted of his own lust and he wound up going against God's commandment. And that's the worst thing you can do when you get tempted with something. And you know it's against God and you go and do it anyway. That's a terrible feeling. I don't like that guilty feeling. You know, it, it's bad enough that, you know, we got to fight with certain things. But I, I don't want to do nothing to bring no sin upon myself. And you shouldn't. Be, you shouldn't either. So let's have a look at this. Don't let nothing tempt you to what to the point to where it's going to take you away from God and make you sin against him. Because that's how we uh, 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 bruise our relationship with him is when we sin. He said, it's our sins that keep us separated from him. It's our sins that keep us from not uh, getting our prayers answered. Go and take a look at Isaiah 59 and read verses 1 through 2. So it said, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So the children of Israel had uh, uh, Jericho under siege. Let's skip down to 17. It said, and the city shall be accursed, even it, talking about Jericho. And all that are therein to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. So when the Lord had uh, uh, told Joshua to go and spy out the land of Jericho, she hid the she hid the spies in the land. And they told her that we was going to keep you and your family safe. Just try. I think they tied a, uh, they, she told her to tie a scarlet uh, 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 ribbon and let it outside the window. So that when uh, the army of Israel came through, when the children of Israel came through, they would save her in her house. So it said, and ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. So this is a, a, a fair warning. Don't take nothing out of this city, because if you do, you're going to trouble your camp. You're going you're gonna to bring a curse upon yourself. But look, this was for the Lord. Verse 19. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So that was supposed to go into the treasury of the Lord. So let's go and take a look at now. Joshua 7. Joshua 7. Let's read verses 1 through 5 and then we're going to skip. So let's take a look. But the children of Israel committed a trespass and a cursed thing. For Achan, the son of Karma, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. God told them not to take that. They took of the accursed thing, and, and they brought a curse. 36 men had got killed when they went up to Ai. So it said, and Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. So we'll see that some of these men, they, they got killed. As a matter of fact, let's continue reading. It said, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. Wow, because Achan took the cursed thing that he was not supposed to be taken. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them before the gate even unto Shabiram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. So they got weak at this point because of one man's sin. God had just told the children of Israel, don't take nothing from out of there. You're going you gonna to bring a curse in the camp. It seems like some people just don't learn from, from speaking to them. They, they got to have some drama happen to them for them to learn. Because this man, Achan, he wound up getting his whole house killed. So watch this. So let's take a look at this. Let's go and look at, because um, it's just so much. So let's look at uh, 
Let's take a look. Let's read. You know what? Let's read eight down to whenever. We'll skip uh, uh, at the appropriate time because this this story is just too good. I, I don't want to cut nothing out. I, I got to read this. It said, oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land of Israel shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut us cut off our name from the earth and what wilt thou do unto thy great name so so joshua is crying out to the lord saying what should i do so watch this it said and the lord said unto joshua get thee up wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face like what you man what you were down here crying for me to me for look at this it said israel have sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which i have commanded them for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So these people, they didn't took a chan and took some of this stuff that God told them not to take. And, you know, he going about like everything is cool. Can't do that. Watch this. So the Lord said. To him, uh, he 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 had these. Uh, he had Israel line up to find out who did this. So it said, uh, "Let's look, let's take a look at verse thirteen. It says, "Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel: There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies." Until you take away the accursed thing from among you. So he said, man, you ain't going to be able to take over this city until you get that uh, accursed thing away from among the camp. So let's see what happened. Verse 14. And the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man so he gonna get down to the bottom of it to see who it was that took this thing that they shouldn't have been taken out of the land so he said and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire he and all that he hath because he have transgressed the covenant of the lord and because he have wrought folly in israel that's a heavy penalty to pray for uh <laughs> what this man took so watch this it wound up. Let's let's take a look. Let's read verses uh, 19 down. Let's read 19 on down. It said, and Joshua said unto Achan, because we already figured out that it was him. The Lord figured it out. He said, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. So it was determined that it was Achan that wound up taking this accursed thing. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Let's see what he did, because he started coveting something that God told him not to touch. He was tempted and drawn away of his own lust and enticed and brought sin on himself. Watch this. It said, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Wow. You see what he did? He was coveting. He was coveting and he also broke God's commandment. God told him not to do that. So he wanted this Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, 50 shekels weight. And to see the unfortunate thing about it is you you God told you not to do that. He told you not to touch nothing out of the out of the land because it was a, it was cursed. They told you what was going in the treasury of the Lord. So why is this man got this stuff hidden in his tent? He was hard headed. Now he ain't even going to get to spend it or see it because he about to get smashed. God about to take his life away. Watch this. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in this tent and the silver under it. So Joshua went to go and make sure what he was saying. Because judgment about to get poured out. It said, and they took them out of the midst of the tent 
and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Watch this. And Joshua and all Israel with them took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. Let's see what they did now. You see what happened when you tempted? Man, this dude, he about to bring some drama on this place. Watch this. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. And they had stoned them with stones. So this man, because he coveted, he got him and his whole household killed because he disobeyed God's word. His desires outweighed what God told him to do. Don't let this be us, people. He said, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord, the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. You could actually go and look up where this place is at. All he had to do was just wait because the next city that they took, everything was theirs. They spoiled the next city. Watch this. Look at AI. Look, they destroyed this place. Watch. Let's see what happened. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee not. Lay, wait, lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. All Achan had to do was just wait till they got to the next city because you see here. Everything that he was looking for, it would have been found here in AI. So that's the same thing with us. Don't let Satan offer you some temporary stuff and keep you from eternal life. Don't let him. Don't 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 accept his offer. Don't accept it. Every good and perfect gift coming down from the father of lights, which is Jesus Christ, the one that created everything. And the father, he put his stamp of approval on it. So that's how we get it. Because everything got to get ran by the Father. That's why we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Let's go and take a look at something else now. Let's go over here and look at James 4. Because we need to resist this devil. This devil is trying to kill us. Let's have a look. James 4. Let's take a look at verse 7. What we need to do? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But the first thing you need to do. We need to submit ourselves to, to the Lord. We need to submit ourselves to him. Not lean on our own understanding. We got to lean on his understanding. Let's go and take a look at something else. Proverbs 25. Because we need to have self-control. We got to have discipline. Got to discipline ourselves. Watch this. Let's have a look. Proverbs 25. Let's go back. Went too far. Proverbs 25. Let's take a look at verse 28. Let's see what this says. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Any and everything could come into your city. The animals could come in and trample over all your beautiful plants that you got. The wild beasts could come in and start devouring people. You have to guard your mind. The scriptures tell that's why I got this written right here. Proverbs 4 and 23. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Everything that we do starts with a thought first and you have to protect your thoughts with the word of God. Let's go and take a look at something else. We got to be disciplined, people. Let's go and take a look. First Corinthians uh, nine. Let's have a look at this. First Corinthians nine. Let's take a look at verse 24. He said, know ye not that they which run in the race run all. But one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. So, you know, when people run in a marathon or whatever the case, only one get the gold medal. But you got to run like you're going to obtain. If we run in this race of life, we, we, we striving for eternal life. Everybody that's on that path and they continue on that path, all of them is going to get a crown of life. Every last one of us. That's the path we want to stay on. We want to stay on that straight and narrow path. 
Not that wide one that everybody is running on and that's leading to destruction. He said, therefore, no, no, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. So you have to be disciplined. It takes discipline. You can't think that, you know, you, you're a professional boxer and you can eat however you want. Your, your, your diet and nutrition ain't well. You ain't hitting the gym. You ain't doing no conditioning. Then when fight, when the time, when it come time to fight night, you ain't even trained. You're going to get whoa out and possibly KO. So watch, we got to stay temperate. It said, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So we, uh, we are running for a crown of life that can never be taken away from us. Let's see what Paul said he do. He said, I therefore so run, not as uncertain to, uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But what is he doing? He know what he getting. He know what the goal is. Watch this. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So we still have to have self-control, people. We still got to deal with what thus saith the Lord. We got to apply this. Let's continue looking at this because the Lord, he got it in the Lord's prayer. I love the Lord's prayer because the Lord's prayer, it tells us to pray for everything that we need. Everything that we need is could be found right here in this Lord's Prayer. Let's take a look. Let's see how Jesus told us to pray. Matthew 6. Let's read uh, verses 9 through 13. Let's have a look at this. It said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we give an honor to the Father. Thy kingdom come, because it's coming down. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the same operation that's going on in heaven right now, that same operation will be brought down here on this earth. That's why it's so important for us to line ourselves up with the word of God right now. Because every knee going to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Watch this. It said, give us this day our daily bread. Give us everything that we need sufficient unto today. Don't worry about tomorrow. He said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So, Lord, forgive us as we forgive the ones that is indebted to us. All right. Let's see what else he said. And lead us not into temptation. Don't let us be uh, uh, led into trials and tribulations. Don't let us be tempted. He said, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This pair got everything in it. Everything that we need. OK, let's go and see something else. Let's see how how else we fight temptation, because we just seen the Lord's Prayer. So let's see what we need to be doing all the time. First Thessalonians five. Let's go and take a look at this. First Thessalonians five. And let's have a look at verse 16. I want to say first Thessalonians five. Ah, uh, Yeah, let's take a look at this. First Thessalonians five and 16. Let's read uh, 16 through 19. It says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. So we got to always be praying. Got to stay pray prayerful. He said, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. We cannot put the spirit out, people. We got to keep our spirit fed because the spirit is what's leading us and guiding us into all truth. It's the Holy Ghost, people. We can't understand the word of God without his spirit. We don't want to quench that. Let's go and take a look at this last place now. Revelations 3. Let's see what the Lord told he was going told us he was going to give us for overcoming, for being disciplined, for denying ourselves. Let's see what he, what we got coming. Ain't nothing better than this. Watch this. I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm sure you all too. I'm sure you all do too. Look look at what he said. He said as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten be zealous, therefore, and repent. So everybody that God love, he rebukes and chastises that individual. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's standing at the door and knocking. What do you mean? At the door of your mind. Let him in. He said, if any man hear my voice and open the door, that's where he knocking at. Where you hear it? Between your ears. What's it right? What's right there between your ears? Your brain, your mind. So that's where he's knocking at. That's what I also say uh, in a day of, in a day when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as in a day of provocation. 
So don't hear, don't hide, don't harden your heart when you're hearing the word of God being spoken to you. So let's see, because it could be God is trying to give you some wisdom and instruction, some understanding. He said, once again, verse 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So now we're going to have a relationship. Now we got a relationship. The Lord is dwelling right there in your heart now. Ain't no better relationship than that. Your friends, your family members, they might not be loyal to you, but God is always faithful. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you as long as you don't leave and forsake him. God is awesome. We can read that. Let's go and take a look now. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So if we overcome, we can sit down on the throne of Jesus Christ. Man, what better honor can we have than that? Ain't nothing better than that, people. We got to give up this life. Give this stuff up. Don't let temptation, don't let Satan tempt you with some stuff that's temporary. Don't let him tempt you with none of that stuff because this stuff going to pass away and he going to the lake of fire. So look, verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. So if you got an ear to hear this, this is talking to you too. This applies to you too. It applies to us. So with that being said, we're going to let it rest right there. I'm praying for the viewers that, that tune in to this channel, all of the subscribers. May the Lord look down from heaven and comfort us. May he lift up his face upon us and may his countenance shine upon us. And with that being said, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. I love you all so much. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Bible. Peace in Jesus name.